start again, my lord. I appear for the JK People's Conference, my lord, in writ petition 1165 of 2019. A question that your lordship put to Mr. Sibyl was, have you challenged the presidential proclamation of 19th December? We've challenged the suspension, my lord, and that is very important to our argument on Article 3. There is also another petition, my lord, uh, Soil Qureshi 1068 of 2019, which actually challenges the proclamation. 2068, right? 1068. Yes. I would begin by saying, as well from my Lord, the Chief Justice, that this oral submission is in the nature of a dialogue and a very important dialogue, which even the US Supreme Court doesn't have. They assume that everything is read and there's a bit of question and answer and that's it. And it is because of the nature of the dialogue, we have to, on an ongoing basis, answer what fell from your Lordships as well. I'll give your Lordships an example. My Lord, the Chief Justice made a reference to uh, 249 and 252. Of course, they are of a different jhana. But nevertheless, my Lord, that question is very, very important for us to build the diversity argument and whether there is transformative constitutionalism, whether there is a, a basic structure, whether that's a lost cause or not. Then, my Lord, your Lordships had asked questions about Article 31D and whether Article 370 sub clause 3 survives. Now, this is important because it's been used only twice. It was used in GO 44, my Lord, and now it has been used once again in GO 273. Now, if it doesn't survive, my Lord, how can it be used in this particular way? We have to answer that question for your Lordship. In addition to that, my Lord, there was, seems to have been some confusion or misunderstanding on the status of merger agreements, my Lord. The question that fell from your Lordships was that once the instrument of accession is over, sovereignty is complete. Our respectful submission, my Lord, on this, which I will elaborate, I've done it in a note, my Lord, like Mr. Zafar, I'll hand over that note, my Lord, to your Lordships. My Lord, Three seven, as far as the instrument of accession is concerned, it deals with external sovereignty. Finally, bear this in mind, it's very important. External sovereignty is lost. With a few exceptions here and there. But internal sovereignty is not lost. That is why in Premchand, they say the monarch was still an absolute monarch. Premnath calls for him. So, Lord, the purpose of the standstill agreement was, what system would you have in the meanwhile? The State of the Raja of uh, JNK didn't stand, stand, didn't sign a standstill. The records show there was some toing and froing and eventually, which means he retained all his power. So, as far as internal sovereignty is concerned, the standstill was very important because all the powers of the Maharajas and the coming states, my lord, retained their internal sovereignty. Now, come to the merger agreement. The merger agreement is important, my lord, because it finally indicates the extern, extent of internal sovereignty. 
if there was no standstill agreement and if there was no merger agreement, the, Lord, the Maharaja would be absolute, as Premanath Kaul says. So I take 370 to be, my Lord, a substitute, a constitutional substitute for a standstill and merger agreement. Without which, my Lord, we are lost. And I'll explore that, my Lord, later when I come to 317. Your Lordship also, my Lord, put a question to Mr. Zafar Shah that on the 4th of August, what were the autonomies that, that you were allowed, you were going to lose? He promised you a list, my Lord. One answer to that is everything, but I will indicate what these autonomies meant and what was lost for Jammu and Kashmir, which comes back to Justice Cole's question, are we flogging a dead horse? The answer is no more. It continues and it has to continue to preserve, my Lord, the Federation and the conditions under which the Federation was created. So let me begin with what I began with the other day, my Lord, and that is that we have the greatest diversity in the world, take many continents together, take many countries. This diversity is unparalleled. That is why, my Lord, Professor Ravinda Kumar, I asked him, I said, what should I say in my Colombo lecture? He said, say that the constitution of India is a constitution for a civilization with many nations and many cultures. And this is what makes our constitution more exciting than any other. On the question of diversity, I was taking your lordships to other note. Just reading it. I have my lord done a list which I'll give to your lordships, my lord. But I was going to invite your Lordship's attention to Article 3 first. All of Article 3, my Lord. But I'm going to read one important aspect of it, my Lord. And that is the proviso which says that before anything is done under Article 3, it is mandatory for the President to refer the bill to the legislature. Mandatory. It's a conditioned precedent before you invoke Article 3. Just as there are conditions in Article 370, which, were, which have to be fulfilled by condition precedents. Now on Article 3, my Lord, The proclamation of 19th December virtually created an amendment of Article 3 by taking the condition precedent out. Mr. Sibyl read all that to you, but I want to refer your Lordships to, Lord, to that particular part of the proclamation. My copy, somewhere here. Your Lordships will find this, my Lord. Like Mr. Dwedi, I have no problem with what your Lordship is doing. We just have to learn and catch up, my Lord. This your Lordships will find in volume three documents. Page 92. And the PDF, my Lord. I'll just give it to your Lordships. Page 92. 
page PDF 92. Now, my lords, I want to take your lordship straight away, and it's very important that we should. Thank you, Mila. Ultimately, every everything boils down to this. Of course, we the constitution itself, and uh, but so far as documents are concerned, it's in one page. Now we have. In case something is missed, you can tell Mr. Uh, Dr. Dhawan's uh, instructing advocate. They'll just put it in and the what do we call this? This whole plastic made up. Not, so, okay, well. I am spark of divine fire. Your Lordship will see that there is a condition precedent in Article 3. And this condition precedent, my Lord, was added to by CO 48, which I'll show to your Lordships in a moment, my Lord. Which further required the bill to be sent to the legislature of the state, but we're not concerned with that because it has to be sent to every single state. Now, my Lord, I take your Lordships to this notification, C sub clause 2. C 
so much of the first proviso of Article 3 of the Constitution as it relates to the reference by the President to the legislature of the state and the second proviso to that article, so that much of Clause 2 of 151, which is about audits, my lord, of the Constitution as it relates to laying before the legislature of the state of, of the report uh, submitted by the governor to the controller, Auditor General. You will see that the opening sentence is the following provisions are suspended. In other words, my Lord, a mandatory provision of Article 3, whether it applies to Kashmir or elsewhere, my Lord, is suspended. It's not a question of just laying before Parliament as a substitute. Article 3 and Article 370 does not tolerate substitutes. Now, my Lord, what does this do? This is not, my Lord, that can be done under a proclamation under 356. It is a constitutional amendment which is subversive of the constitution itself. If this suspension fails, the Lord President's rule will fail. And its extension, my Lord, in July will also fail. You have amended the constitution, albeit to all states and certainly to Jammu and Kashmir. And this mandatory provision takes us to the core of the mandatory requirements, my Lord, of Article 3. Because the entire JK or Reorganization Act emanates from Article 3 and Article 4. Take away this condition, Mr. Lord. How, how do we deal with this uh, Article 356.1c? Sorry, my Lord. Uh, Article 356.1c says that if the so he may make a press uh, right, proclamation where a situation has arisen that the government cannot be carried on in accordance with the provisions of this constitution in any state. And then C. Make, make such, such incidental and consequential provisions as appear to, be the, to appear to the president to be necessary or desirable for giving effect to the objects of the proclamation, including provisions for suspending in whole or in part the operation of any provision of this constitution relating to any body or authority. So the president has a power to suspend uh, certain provisions of the constitution during right. the operation of a proclamation under the, 356. The now. suspension in this case goes beyond supplement, my lord. It goes to actually taking out a mandatory provision. Of course, my Lord, Article 4 says that any change that is made will not will be treated as, a, as not requiring an amendment. But leave that aside, my Lord. How is 3 and 4 to operate after this? The presidential duty, my lord, has to be a little more careful because this was tailored way back in 19th December 2018 to start a process, my lord, of amending the constitution for the purposes of which Pres normally, normally when the legislature here, of course, it's the constitution uses the expression means and includes. Here it's not means, but it says make and includes. When means and includes is used by the legislature, it's an indication of expanding the power. So when the constitution says, it begins by saying make incidental or supplementary provisions, yes. and then says including. So this including seems to be to widen the ambit of what was stated earlier. Namely, the earlier part says you will make only 
you will make incidental or supplemental provisions. But then it says including. So including would mean that what was otherwise not a supplemental or incidental provision is within the ambit of the presidential proclamation, isn't it? Because suppose the clause C read just up to proclamation and didn't have and including. It's not and including, it's including. That's right. Suppose it's it ending with the, the word proclamation. The operation of any provision of this. So if, if the last part of Article 356 1C was not there, you could have challenged any amendment of the Constitution on the ground that you don't have the power to make an amendment of the Constitution in the guise of making an incidental or supplemental provision. Not this is the basis of our challenge. In our petition, we have challenged only the suspension. My question is this. Suppose the president in a proclamation suspends the operation of any provision of the Constitution. Is that amenable to a challenge on the ground that it is not incidental or supplemental? Uh, or are these words of widening the ambit of the first part of 356 1B? It so has to be immune from such a challenge. This my Lord, has remained within the limits of 356. That is for the governor, you read the president. For the legislature, you read the legislature. But I've never seen a provision in any proclamation, my Lord, throughout my Lord, these decades, which actually uses the supplemental and including. I've never seen it take away a mandatory provision of the Constitution. This is exceptional, my Lord. Now you can read it together in one way, you can read it together in the other way. If you expand, 356C, my lord, then you will say that the president has a carte blanche to amend any part of the constitution as part of the supplementary provisions. Can you, for example, say that there'll be no judiciary in the state? That's right, my lord. That's what you're That may be covered by the proviso, but at any right. rate. Lord. Oh, yes, the proviso so, says, lord, of course. Supplementary, this 356C has to be read with the mandatory provisions which it cannot dilute. But actually, the proviso, Dr. Davan, the proviso seems to indicate that if Parliament, if the Constitution wanted to exclude a particular power from the authority to suspend a provision of the Constitution, then that has been specifically uh, defined. So the proviso says that you will not suspend anything pertaining to a High Court, or you will not assume to yourself as a president any of the powers which are vested by the constitution in a high court during the operation of a proclamation under article 356. So where it wanted to introduce a restraint on the presidential power, it has done so in the form of the proviso. Right. Do we now say that, well, apart from the proviso, there may be certain other parts of the constitution which the president cannot suspend? No, that is or would that be reading into article 356 words which are not there? Uh, not just, just one. I think coupled with the words appears to the president to be necessary or desirable for giving effect to the objects of the proclamation. Yes. So there has to be a connect and a nexus with the object of enforcing the pro proclamation. That's a restriction. It must relate to 356. <coughs> In other words, whatever is required to materialize 356, it must be related to that. And therefore, my lord, these words, necessary or desirable, are not carte blanche powers of the president. Could he have, under, under these provisions, suspended part three? It has been done, my lord. In, part three? That fundamental rights, directive principles. Could he have done all that, my lord? Therefore, my lord, it has to be given, even with the caveat of what regards the high court, it has to be given a limited meaning where your lordship finds that in every state that has been created under Article 3 and 4, this has been treated as a mandate paper provision. There is a caveat that your lordships have imposed on Article 3 and 4.
that all that it requires is a reference to the legislature and the union is not bound by it. Those in a lot, when I do come to my written submissions, I'll run through them very fast because I don't need to about the, take out the books or refer to the cases. This, to my mind, my lord, taints the entire process. Uh, on the inclusion provisions for suspending in whole or in part the operation of any provisions of this constitution relating to any body or authority of the state. And then a column. This further subscribes the extent of the presidential proclamation. Otherwise, my lord, 356 is an exception. It overrides federalism. It collapses democracy in a state. Chips, because if the presidential proclamation does something that is irreversible, and that is a test your lordship will use. And Justice Khanna is right, my lord, when he emphasizes necessary or desirable. In relation to body and authority, as I pointed out, if this proclamation is bad, then its extension, my lord, in July is also bad. Because that was a parliamentary extension for a further six months.
Yes. Now, Lord, Article 358 suspends Article 19 during the proclamation, not beyond. This is now, my Lord, and your Lordships will see that further when I present CO 272 and 273. They go well beyond the period. And the genesis of all this, my Lord, is the presidential proclamation. Even assuming, my Lord, it goes for one year, it takes away conditionalities which cannot be taken away. A term, I'm sorry. I'm a little loud. I'm not used to whispering into microphones. <laughs> like my predecessors. <laughs> now, Lord, I'm going to place. No, in classrooms, I was very soft. Classrooms are a wonderful exchange with students, unparalleled, just as this is an exchange between the bench and us, my Lord. And it is the nature of this exchange, my Lord, that we must honor, or under limitations of time, of course, my Lord. But we must, my Lord, honor this exchange as the most important part of arguing in this court. No, my Lord, in Article 3, see, I just want to point out the C1. My Lord, your Lordships will see that because your Lordship raised, raised the question, what did you lose on 4th August after 4th August? The CO48, the PDF is 485. Right? PDF 13, my Lord. Take it out there. I'm going to have nightmares about PDFs, my Lord. <laughs> now, my Lord, if your Lordships were to come to page 10 of volume 3, Four zero six, sorry, not external, and PDF. PDF one three. One three. Same volume. Same volume. Nineteen fifty. This is the nineteen fifty four. Fifty four order. My lord, in a sense, the fifty four order and three seventy, my lord, represents the constitution as it relates to Kashmir. They were brought in by the Constituent Assembly. Now, I'll just read out that particular portion, the Lord, so that I complete the three, four argument before I go into the business of how elaborate our Constitution is. At the bottom of that page, my Lord, 406, provided further that no bill providing for in increasing or diminishing the area of the state of Jammu and Kashmir or altering the name or boundary of that state shall be introduced in parliament without the consent of the legislature of the state. It puts in a conditionality, my Lord. not just to circulate it, but a conditionality, my Lord, emanating from the state itself. Now, whether all this can be wiped out by CO 272 and 273 is another matter. I'm going to make one further proposition, my Lord, about President's rule, lest I forget 
I'll refer to it later, my lord, if I can. Now, my lord, the further proposition, which is a wider proposition, is this. That during President's rule, Article 3 and 4 and 370 cannot be invoked. Article? Cannot be invoked. Article 3 and 4. 3 and 4, my lord. Why? Because they have conditionalities, my lord. And the con conditionality is specific to the legislature of the state to the government of the state and the legislature becomes parliament the governor becomes the president therefore the conditionalities that exist in 3 and 4 and article 370 neither parliament my lord nor the president can be substitutes for the conditionalities that exist in article 3 4 and 370 you don't go through that process. Dr. Zavan, it's such a broad proposition with regard to Article 3 4. Forget about 370 for the time being. May not be correct in terms of the language used of Clause 3 to 356. Let's hope it never happens, but in a given case, it can happen. There can be disputes well, not, between two states and uh, which is impossible to resolve until unless the center steps in with regard to boundary well, or something. If, like so broad proposition, don't if no, you are if you're making a broad proposition I'm like that, I'm responding. it's very difficult. It's very difficult to I'm accept. responding. Because we can be varied of situations which you which we may not be able to postulate as today. Well, I'm making about a, a proposition about process and substitution. Because 370. Subclause one, my lord, has its discipline. Just as three and four has its mandate said, discipline. Leave three seventy for the time being, but a broad proposition that Article three and four, the provisos, can never be suspended in terms of Article three fifty six. My lord, the Parliament cannot be, and I'll show the debate with, when Amit Shah introduced this, my lord, in the Lok Sabha. Parliament cannot be a substitute for the legislature of the state. That's a very narrow proposition, my lord. I've been prompted, my lord. Nicely. And when Mr. Sibyl talked about the political uses and abuses of the Constitution, then Proclamation 19th December, my lord, is an abuse of the Constitution. And it would be a further abuse of the Constitution uh, if we substitute for legislative parliament. Dr. Dhawan, there's difference between existence of power and abuse of power or use of power. Of course, my lord. So let's not confuse the two. Sorry, my lord. There's a difference between existence of power or use of the power or abuse of the power. No, my lord. So don't, well, let's not. There is a power, no doubt. Its exercise is equally fundamental. We can't wish away the exercise as being purely nominal in nature. Now, my Lord, when Maharashtra was broken, uh, and the judgments are all there in my written submissions, I'll take your Lordship very fast through them. They said, you have to refer whether you like it or not. Likewise, Punjab, my Lord. You have to refer the bill to the legislature of the state. You can't self-refer it to parliament. And the Constitution says no bill can be introduced, you know. It's a complete barbell because we have to understand the limitations of President's rule. And this is one of the important limitations that during President's rule, you may have the power to do whatever you want in 3, 4, and 3, 70. But the process, my lord, are conditions 
which can't be substituted by simply saying the governor will now become the president and the legislature will become parliament. This process of substitution, my lord, is subversive of the constitution. Um, Dr. Davan, can parliament enact a law during the, uh, during the subsistence of a proclamation under Article 356 in exercise of the power under Article 246.2 or in respect of a state list item? Look, they can pass a law, my lord. No doubt about that, subject to all the limitations that exist. Right. Except, my lord, there is when it passes a law under Article 3 and 4, it must observe the conditionalities. In other words, what you are trying to, the, your argument would be this, that while parliament can exercise the lawmaking power of the state legislature during the subsistence. With all its limitations. Yes, with all the its state limitations. list comes to them. The state list comes to them. But certain other functions of the state legislature, namely in terms of the first proviso to discuss a legislative proposal for altering the boundaries of the state or under the second proviso for giving consent, that power can't be assumed by parliament. Lord. Because then we are creating an exception Lord. to the language. I mean, we, you may possibly argue that you have to create that exception to give a purposive interpretation to that provision. But this one, one part is very clear that to accept your argument, we are then creating an exception to 356.1b. Because 356.1a says that the powers of the state government are vested in the president or in the governor, as the proclamation would say, other than the powers of the legislature of the state. Then 356.1b says, declare that the powers of the legislature of the state shall be exercisable by or under the authority of parliament. So we will then, to accept your argument, we have to then hold, of course, maybe by a process of construction, that those powers which are referable to Article 3 and 4, which are powers of the legislature of the state, no doubt they are uh, powers of the legislature of the state. The difference between the legislative powers of the and the consultative and other powers of the legislature. If your lordship will see 357 below. But it says, declare that the powers of the legislature of the state. Now, which are the powers of the legislature of the state? Not legislative just, powers. No, the, not just the powers in Article 246, mm -hmm. but it could be all the powers of the legislature of the state which are vested in the Constitution. Would that be not a more natural construction? Take that your to Article 257, sub clause 2. 357. Three fifty seven one, my lord, declares that the powers of the legislature shall be exercisable by or under the authority of parliament. It shall be competent for parliament to confer on the president the power of the legislature to, of the state to make laws and to authorize the president to delegate subject to such conditions as they may think fit the power so conferred to any other authority. For parliament or the president or any other authority in whom such power to make laws is vested under sub clause A to make laws conferring and imposing duties or authorizing the conferring of powers and the imposition of duties upon the union or the officers and authorities thereof. For the president to authorize when the people of also the people is not in session expenditure from the consolidated fund of the state pending the sanction of such expect expenditure by parliament. More important, the Lord, is to any law made in the exercise of power of the legislature by parliament or the president or other authority referred to in subclause so-and-so, which parliament or the president or such authority would, would not, but for the issue of the proclamation of 356, have been competent to make after the proclamation has ceased to operate, continue in force until altered or repealed or amended by a competent legislature. Which is the competent legislature? 
So, beloved, even as regards the functions of parliament, they are specified. In fact, all these commissions, my lord, they report. And when the government of the state, it is a very interesting provision that it shall be laid before the legislature of the state, explaining with a memo memorandum the action taken or proposed to be taken on the recommendations relating to the state reasons for the non acceptance. This is my lord 338 7. This is what should be done with President's rule, my lord. Even the governor's report, my lord, was not placed. This is what has to be written in, just as your lordship in Nagraj added conditionalities, my lord. This is what should be written into 356. You put in all the information you have, you put in the governor's report, and you give the reasons for the non acceptance. This runs for the other commissions as well. Otherwise, my lord, 356 has become a farce. When I was doing my book on President's Rule, my lord, the elaborate discussion on Kerala, my lord, when the constant when President's Rule was imposed. As we come down the line, there is hardly any discussion in Parliament. Why? Because all the information is not even there. And in the case, my lord, of Jammu and Kashmir, it wasn't there. The entire correspondence, my lord. I'm just building, my lord, something that is here in 338.7, which is also for the other commissions, my lord. Something, my lord, that gives information to the people and those people who have to, the parliament that has to bless or unbless, as the case may be, my lord, President's rule. That entire cache of information which is so fundamental in order to democracy and federalism is missing in the proclamations. Then, my lord, if I may take my lords, my lord, to an interesting provision, my lord, 330, my lord, which makes special provision for reservation of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. Sorry. You saw 30, 330. You've seen 330. Assam is mentioned. You've yes. done that. 343, my lord. This has to be read with the eighth schedule. Kashmiri, my lord, is one of the languages recognized by the eighth schedule. Finally, just bear this in mind. So, in communications, in complaints, etc., Kashmir, Kashmiri can be used. That has not been taken away and cannot be taken away. Part of the spirit, my lord, of a region or a state is its language. Now, my lord, your lordships, when you look at the language of the union, a commission is appointed. Three forty-seven makes special provisions for language spoken by a section of the population, and of course, my lord, chapter four—that's three fifty—has special directives in relation to language. Who is going to make those special directives now? The president, parliament. What is the status of Kashmiri now, my lord? Does it disappear from the eighth schedule, my lord? Then, my lord, 371A, my lord, has a very interesting provision. 368, my lord, I have kind of dealt with, my lord. So I won't take your lordships to that. But 371 A, my lord. 
It is a very interesting provision in law. With all of this discussion on the Uniform Civil Code, these are also unamendable provisions, Mr. Just as we are arguing that 370 was unamendable, my lord, by 368, subject to a certain procedure. Three seventy one A says, notwithstanding anything in this constitution, no act of parliament in respect of the religious and social practices of the Nagas, Naga customary law and procedure, administration of civil and criminal justice involving decisions according to Naga customary law, shall apply to the state of Nagaland unless the legislative assembly of Nagaland by a resolution so decides. Non-legislative power. And the same is repeated, my lord, the important provision, my lord, in 371, of course, concerns the hill areas of Manipur, very relevant. But my learned friend has a point. That if there is president's rule, the legislative assembly has this power, can parliament exercise it, my lord? That is why, my lord, it is restrained in 356. Now, my lord, the controversial provision in which your lordship has given a judgment is 371F, capital F, sub clause F. This is Podial, my lord. If I have time, my lord, I'll take your lordship. So if not, my lord, I'll just refer to paragraphs. Parliament, for the purpose of protecting the rights and interests of different sections of the population of Sikkim, may make provisions for the number of seats in the legislative assembly of the state of Sikkim, which may be filled by candidates belonging to such sections for the de delimitation of the assembly constituencies from which candidates belonging to such sections alone may stand for election to the Legislative Assembly. This, my lord, was examined in Podia. I'll give your lordship the reference, my lord, Podia and Kana, which volume is it in? It's in volume 14, my lord. The argument was a very interesting argument, my lord. Baba Sahib and Mehta itself said in Parliament that there will be one person, one vote apart from the reservations from SCST, etc. So the argument that was advanced, my lord, which led to a 3-2 decision, was that although this is their part of the constitution, we have to take the history of Sikkim into account, and reservations for Bhutiyas, Lepchas, and the Sun are permissible. This, your lordships, my lord, will find in volume 14, 6350. Uh, the majority starts at 6392. Mandatory provisions respecting the Lord what the people of Sikkim had asked for. Albeit, my lord, with adjustments to the constitution. Now, my lord, while you're on it, will your lordship just turn to Podial, my lord, because it's important to bear in mind. PDF care. 305. Volume 14, 305. Starts it, sorry. Uh, volume 14 page. Cases volume. Zero. Zero. If your lordships will turn to six three nine four, Lord, which is PDF, which is PDF three forty nine. Where does it actually begin the judgment? Ah, yes, I got it. Sorry, Lord. It begins at 305. 
where it starts going. Yes. And I'm referring to the discussion in just Chief Justice Vikram Chalaiya's judgment below. At PDF 349. TKM on 36394, which is PDF 249. 349. Yes. Now, my here, I'll go through it very, very quickly. Just which learned Chief Justice Malod goes from Paris 66 onwards to all the proclamations and discussions till Paris 76, Malod. Seventy-four in particular, my Lord, at page six three nine six. The year nineteen seventy-three saw, saw the culmination of a series of successive political movements in Kashmir towards the government responsible to the people. Then it mentions the Tripartite Agreement, clause five of which is mentioned there in Para seventy-four, and various other provisions are made. Well, thank you. Do have one thing where he actually deals with. Where he actually says, just give me a moment. What oh, they are. At para 120, of the judgment? PDF 364. Why was this Lord promised to the people honored despite a provision of the Constitution? And this is explained by the majority at para 120, 6409. PDF 320. PDF 364. What was the rationale, my lord, of respecting what the people of Sikkim wanted, despite the provision in this constitution, one person, one vote, and no vote on account of religion? The rationale and constitutionality of Clause F and other provisions of the electoral laws impugned in these petitions are sought to be justified by the respondents on grounds that a perfect arithmetical equality or value of votes is not constitutionally mandated, imperative of democracy. And second, even if the impugned provisions make a departure from tolerance limits and constitutional and the constitutional permission permissible limits. The discriminations arise are justiciable on the basis of the historical conditions peculiar to and characteristic of the evolution of Sikkim's political institutions and the characteristic of the evolution of Sikkim's political institution. Therefore, my Lord, your Lordship has been taken into the discussions that were held as far as JNK was concerned. And why it is important, the law, particularly as I indicated, the merger agreement, which deals with internal sovereignty. Unlike the law, the instrument of accession, which deals with external sovereignty. Then the law, the last four lines are important. What article of, of 120, 371 FF, and the electoral laws in relation to Sikkim seek to provide a desire is to maintain this balance in the peculiar historical setting of the development of Sikkim and its political institution. Sikkim is the only other minor example we have other than Kashmir, 
where it was entered into or not. And therefore, you take into account all the antecedent discussions and see if they make up the case, whether for 370 or otherwise. In my voice. Put some whiskey in it. Now, lots. I take your lordships a lot to schedule five. I'll skip my lot the in the constitution. Schedule 5, my lord, deals with the administration of scheduled areas and scheduled tribes. Some of us are not happy with the Constitution bench decision in Chabrulu, my lord, on how you apply legislative powers. But, my lord, there's a Tribal's Advisory Council. So, when the Governor, my lord, applies laws under 5 sub clause 2, Subclause 5 says no regulation under this paragraph unless the governor making the regulation, regulation has in the case where there is a tribal advisory council consulted such council. Where, where is that, Dr. Dhaman? Well, this is in subpara 5, my lord. Okay. 5-5, five, five, Consultation with the tribes advisory council. Now here, my lord, even with the, there is power, you must consult the tribal advisory council. Then, my lord, I come to the most important article on autonomy, schedule on autonomy, schedule five, a six. Not my learned friend rightly points out that Schedule 5, my lord, deals with Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, and Mizoram, excludes them, and then this, my lord, is applied in Schedule 6. Now, my lord, we come to the question of autonomy of the Northeast, my lord. My lord, without all these autonomies, my lord, India would have collapsed by now. Because unless all this was given, my lord, to the states in question in the light of antecedent discussions, my lord, this quest for uniformity across the board which 272 and 273 seem to countenance, my lord, is not the heart and soul of the Indian constitution. It is autonomy, autonomous, autonomy within federations, special provisions in relation to people. 
Take that away, my Lord. We don't need such a big constitution. And all the antecedent discussions, my Lord, become part of these autonomies and special provisions. We can't wish them away, my Lord, and say they are just history. Now, my Lord, kindly come to Schedule 6. There is, my Lord, apart from the ones that are dealt in Schedule 5, as my learned friend pointed out, this applies to tribal areas in Assam, Meghale, Tripura, and Mizoram. And sub para one, my lord. Is headed autonomous districts and autonomous regions. They have an in-between status between panchayats, my lord. and union territories. Now, my Lord, under Article 1, sub clause 3, the governor, no doubt, my Lord, with the advice of his council of ministers, wherever we read governor, my Lord, it is rarely in his personal capacity apart from death penalty cases in which your lordship has ruled. The governor may, by public notification, include any area in any of the parts of the said table, exclude any area in, in any, any of the parts of the said table, create a new autonomous district, increase the area of any autonomous district, diminish the area of any autonomous district, unite two or more autonomous districts or parts thereof, so as to form an autonomous district, Alter the name of any autonomous district. Define the body boundaries of any autonomous district. This is a little akin, my lord, to Article 3. And this is where the entire politics of the Northeast, my lord, and the provisions, my lord, relating to the Northeast arise. Gorkha say we want Gorkha land. Somebody say I want Bodo land. All this, my lord, emanates from Schedule 5, 6, and the concept of autonomy. Then, my lord, subpara 2. There shall be a district council for each autonomous district, considering consisting of not so many members, shall, of which four will be nominated by the governor. And then, my lord, there shall be a separate regional council for each area constituted an autonomous region under subpara 2, subpara 2 of each district and regional council shall be a body corporate lord, with its seal, etc. What is important, my lord, is also what do these autonomous councils do? Finally, come to paragraph three. Powers of the district and regional councils to make laws. Is there a lot of To each of these is given a lawmaking power with, of course, some limits. Without which we might lose the Northeast. It is this democratization, Lord, 
of power that has enabled Milord Ast to make special concessions where they are necessary. Given the antecedent history, as I've explained in the case of Second, then the Lord, the regional councils, district councils and regional councils to make laws. And then, my lord, there are a series Now, my lord, there are two interesting provisions, my lord, which your lordships will probably find in the footnote to the to the sixth schedule. That is an article, my lord, a subpara 3a. Wasn't without without protest and accommodation. Has your lordship got three A in the lot somewhere in the probably in the footnote? Yes. Yeah. Additional powers of North Kachar Hills Autonomous Council and Karbi Anglong Autonomous Council to make law. And this includes without subject to the provisions, of course, of list one seven and fifty-two. Interesting part, as my learned friend points out, in 371-3AB, communication, my lord, is given to the, it says to the councils, that is to say roads, bridges, ferries, and other means of communication not specified in list one of your duty. Seven. Now, Lord, come to three B. Your lordships are familiar, my lord, with the borderland, my lord, agitation. I needn't explore that further, although we have material on it. Three B says additional powers of the borderland territorial council to make laws. And then lists them what they can make laws. Paragraph four, my lord. I'm almost done with not with this diversification point, my lord. Now come to paragraph four, administration of justice in autonomous districts and autonomous regions. Which goes on to then say, may appoint suitable persons to be members of such village councils and presiding officers of such courts. It's a little lower down, my lord, in that paragraph. Which is the next uh, clause? No, no. Para four, you were saying. I was taking your lordships to para four, my lord. That's the administration of justice. That's the administration of justice. Of course, my lord. Sub para three says the High Court shall exercise jurisdiction over the suits and cases to which provisions of sub para two of this paragraph yes. apply, as the governor may for time to time specify. Even as regards the High Court. Yes, Dr.
Then Milot, 121, uh, sorry, para 12 and 12A. Twelve A and twelve double A, my lord. I want to point out how in the state of Meghalaya and Tripura, my lord, autonomous districts have laws which are subject to what is equivalent to the two fifty four procedure. And your lordship shall see in 12a, notwithstanding anything in the constitution. Likewise, my lord, 12a, notwithstanding anything in the constitution. Then 12b from Mizoram, my lord, notwithstanding anything in this constitution. It limits even the powers of the legislature. No, he's seventy. Okay, yep. Lord, the reason why I've cited all this, my Lord is because of the diversity this constitution, my lord, makes in federalism and democracy. A diversity that is to be treasured, not wished away in the name of uniformity. There are no dead horses to be flogged. Well, diversity, I mean, you are right, it's possibly more diverse than the whole of Europe combined together. Europe, America, or Sub-Saharan Africa take parts of the South Seas. This is, and so is Jammu and Kashmir, my lord, with its history. It has its own diversities. Diversity is necessitated because of the absence of the merger agreement, my lord. So what I'm going to call this, although, my lord, in my submission, I've called these asymmetrical provisions. These are, in fact, multi-symmetrical provisions. This makes our constitution unlike any other in the world. Simple examples of asymmetry are Canada. You will have French in one area and English in the other. Or Belgium, the three language formula. Those are asymmetrical. The Indian constitution is multi-symmetrical. Of which JNK is a part. For its reasons, I'll now come, my lord, straight away to 317. Much of it has been argued, so I don't have to take your lordship through all of it, my lord. Point out the lunch that. I'm sorry I've taken some time, my lord. Because as soon as your lordship asks for a list, as you asked Mr. Zafar Shah, your lordship said, He's done, you've done with point six, now what? Come to the other one. I have a list which I'll give to your lordships after lunch. Uh, Dr. Dhawan, uh, what, how long would you now take after lunch? So that the next An hour or so, possibly, my lord. Could we cut it, uh, possibly uh, curtail it to about half an hour after lunch? Yeah. Half an hour after lunch, can we conclude it? Maybe. It may not be enough. Now. Just give me that, my lord. All right, 45 minutes. 2.45, we'll uh, move on to the next step. Well, you usually arrive late, my lord. That knocks off 10 minutes. No, of... That's why I said 45 minutes. <laughs> he didn't say 2.45. <laughs> but we'll be here at uh, 2 o'clock. No, my lord. There's Mr. Dinesh Duvedi's time, my lord. He took my time. <laughs> on technical incompetence, as I did on libraries. <laughs> All that has to be adjusted, doesn't it? I'll do my best, my lord. I'll do my best. Because what I've done now, my lord, as I put sense the summary 
at the end, which I'll hand over like Mr. Zafar Jashpa did. But what I can't resist, my lord, on the diversity argument, a passage from TMA Pi, which is not in your lordship's compilation. So I've made copies. May I hand them over? The other side also. Now I'll take your lordship straight away to para 157, which is on page 586. And just below Placetum D. This is the most evocative understanding of the mm -hmm. diversity of our constitution, apart from the two De Delhi judgments, <coughs> which went into it in depth. Now, just below Placidum D, Lord, may I just read? Yes. All the people of India are not alike. And that is why preferential treatment to a special section of society is not frowned upon. Article 30 is a special right conferred on the religious and linguistic minorities because of their numerical handicap and to instill in them a sense of security and confidence, even though the minorities cannot per se be regarded as weaker sections or underprivileged sections. Now, 158 is the evocative passage that I want to read. The 1 billion population of India consisting of six main ethnic groups, 52 major tribes, six major religions, 6,400 6, castes and subcastes, 18 major languages, and 1,600 minor languages and dialects. The essence of secularism can best be depicted if a relief map of India is made in mosaic, where the aforesaid 1 billion people are the small pieces of marble that go into the making of the map. Each person, whatever his, her language, caste, religion, has his or her individual identity, which has to be preserved, so that when pieced together, it goes to form a depiction with the different geographical features of India. These small pieces of marble in the form of human beings, which may be individually be dissimilar to, to each other, when placed together in a systematic manner, produce the beautiful map of India. Each piece, like a citizen of India, plays an important part in the making of the whole. The variations of the color, as well as the different shades of the same color in a map, are the result of these small pieces of different shades and colors. But even when one small piece of marble is removed, the whole map of India would be scarred and the beauty lost. Just over the page, my lord. Each of the people of India has an important place in the formation of a nation. Each piece has to retain its color. By itself, it may be an insignific insignificant stone, but when placed in a proper manner, going into the making of a full picture of, it, of India in all its different colors and hues. A citizen of India stands in a similar position. The constitution recognizes the differences amongst the people of India, but it gives equal importance to each of them their differences notwithstanding, for only then the can there be a unified secular nation. Recognizing the need for the preservation and retention of different pieces that go into the making of the notion, nation, the constitution, while maintaining inter alia the basic principles of equality, contain adequate provisions that ensure the preservation of these different pieces. I wanted to read this, my lord. It's a very evocative passage, my lord. No, my lord. Yes. Your lordship will be dealing with pieces of marble, my lord. How you deal with it, my lord, will come later. Now, my lord, may I invite my lords, my lord, to my submissions? Yes. Which is in volume one, page 195, PDF 195. I'm going to go at super speed, my lord, because there's a guillotine on my head, my lord. Very sharp one, I might add. Now, my lord, I'll just take your lordship very quickly 
come to the 198 your lordship's page, the external your lordship's page. Skip all that, your lord, and come to page 200, which is page. Which 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 file are you? Volume one of the written submissions, my lord. Yes, yes. Yes. Volume two is the simple, that is volume one of the record. Oh, I see. I'm sorry, my one ninety. Uh, your your PDF the... page one ninety five. Page one ninety five. Where it starts, my lord. One ninety five to two eighty. There is an index which I won't trouble your lordship with, my lord. This a volume two. But I'll take volume one. Volume one. Volume two was Mr. Sibyl's submission, which came, my lord, a few days late. You can know volume one. But it's an article flow of chemistry. It's 200 pages. I was using it. Volume one page. Volume one. Volume one. Page 200. Your lordships have it, Lord? Yeah. Yes. I'm taking your lordships on PDF 200 in para 1.5 because all the other documents have been read. I'm not going to repeat them. The history has been shown to your lordships. But I made a point, my lord, about why. The merger agreement was important and why 370 in one sense represents the standstill and merger agreements. I'm going to read this passage, my lord, from Prem Nath Kaur in Para 1.5. Has your lordship got it? Yes. Referring to the, to the past, my lord, thus there can be no doubt that this act of 13, uh, 1939 marks the second step taken by the highness in associating his subjects with the administration of the state. It did not constitute even a partial surrender of his highness of his sovereign rights in favor of the Sabha. Even after the instrument of accession, my lord, he had not given up his rights. That your lordship will come over the page. I can get the PDF numbers to this if your lordship wants me not, but it's in. No, we've got it. Now, my lord, dealing with after the instrument of accession. How many judges was Pimnat called? Right. No, it's. Yes, five judges. These are all constitution benches. Now, my Lord, may I take your Lordships to 1.7? This is in his in relationship uh, in, in regard to the relationship of these of uh, the Maharaja with the Praja Sabha. This is Praja Sabha. Praja Sabha. I'm now building on that, my Lord. Yes. Therefore, my Lord. What actually 370 represents is two powerful demo democratic movements, my lord. One in the people of India, my lord, and the other, my lord, in the people of Kashmir, demanding of their Maharaja, which is eventually what he did. He gave a Praj Sabha, he wanted a national assembly, but he, he didn't agree to a constituent assembly, which came later, my lord. Now, my lord, 1.7. Maharaja Haris, Hari Singh continued to be the absolute monarch of the state and in the eyes of international law he might conceivably have claimed the status of a sovereign and independent state because all the instrument of accession did is put in these th four conditions and said externally my lord that's why i made the distinction 
between external sovereignty and internal sovereignty. This is with reference to 50, date is 15th August 1947, not with reference to the... I'm coming, Malod, to the instrument of accession, Malod, in one that's point... Right, that's 1.9. That's right, Malod, that's the instrument of accession. Immediately after that comes 1.10. Thus, by the instrument of accession, the Maharaja took the very important step of recognizing the fact that his state was a part of the dominion of India. That's all that the instrument of accession represented. We can't say at that point that he had surrendered all his sovereignty. He had not, my lord. That process began partly politically because of the political movement and partly because of 370, my lord. Because that's where we see a coming together of the Constituent Assembly, the Governor, the President, all that comes together because there was no merger or standstill agreement. Now, I won't read, Milad, the proclamation of uh, uh, the Maharaja, Milad, of 1948, where he talks of his Council of Ministers. I'll just come straight away, my lord, to what Sardar Patel said over the page in 1.13. <coughs> in view of the special problems with which the government of Kashmir is faced, we have made a special provision for the continuance of the con constitutional relationship of the state on the existing basis. And it's very important to understand what 370 really represented and what the instrument of accession really did. It bound itself to India, but the rest of the process of democratization, a lot, of adjustments, of sharing of power, was never done in the case of Jammu and Kashmir. Even in the white paper, my lord, on the states, there is one paragraph which says, we are not dealing with Jammu and Kashmir. Then, Milot, your lordships will just come to 1.21. On the 12th of November, pursuant to a resolution of the Constituent Assembly, resolving to end hereditary rulership rulership in the state yuvraj karan singh was elected to the post of so and so and dynastic rule in jnk came to an end now your lordships have already been shown how co48 emanated from the assembly of jammu and kashmir constituent assembly and got became part of our constitution this part a lot of your lordships i i needn't give you the cross references need i a lot PDF. No, need, no, that's now, my lord, I'll skip the rest. 1.24, my lord, I've already read the second proviso to Article 3. Yes, we saw. So I won't read it again, my lord. But I come, my lord, to page 11, 1.30. Before that, my lord, just one point. Okay, that was one thing, uh, just more for your juniors and for you. Uh, the dates which you have given in the written submissions, if anything is missing in Mr. Sibyl's uh, list of dates, perhaps it might be good if we have it in one place. Likewise, when the respondents begin, it would be very nice you know, if we have one consolidated list of dates so that we don't have to, you know, sort of then right. uh, couple good. between two or Showing three different. Mr. Sibyl's uh, list of dates in a separate font or separate color or something and well, something which you're is. adding because i think we were reading mr sibyl's list of days there's no innuendo in any of the lists. It's, it's just state the date so if you feel that you know there's something missed out then you can make track changes in that list of dates so it'll be a little easier for us uh, ultimately yeah. after the my lord what i'm okay. endeavoring to do my lord substance to the list of all dates. right fair this enough. is what i'm trying to fair, do. fair enough then there's not not just reading it as a list of dates fair 
Now, 1.25, my lord. One point two five, my lord, on the seventeenth of October, nineteen fifty-six, the Constitution of Jammu and Kashmir was adopted by the JK Assembly. All the details are given there, my lord. Yes. Now, my lord, this is a similar aspect of Indian federalism to have a separate constitution for a state. For others, you gave autonomous regions, you bound them together, you expanded it, but this can the jk constitution of 1957 be wished away by an amendment to co2 272 273 in article 3 it simply can't my lord so one of the big losses is where is it it's like Macbeth, the thane of fife he had a wife where is she now jk had a constitution where is it now has it been subsumed by 273. And when I go to 273, my lord, I'll deal with that. Now, my lord, I come to asymmetrical federalism at 1.30. Kindly change that to multi-symmetrical, as I've argued, my lord. Now, my lord, all those references are there. But and of course, I've given your Lordship a list, which I don't want, which is not repeated here. So I'll come straight away to 1.33. The importance of the Delhi decisions. I'll take up the second decision first. The Chief Justice, after reviewing the asymmetrical provisions described above in State of Delhi so-and-so in 2023, held that regard must be had to the principles of asymmetrical federalism embodied in the Indian Constitution, and that constitutional principle must be given substantive weight to this underlying principle. I'll read that paragraph. Actually, I should read it at the end, but I'll read it now. This variance in the constitutional treatment of union territories, as well as the absence of a homogeneous class, is not unique only to union territories. The Constitution is replete with instances of special arrangements being made to accommodate the specific regional needs of states in specific areas. Therefore, NCTD is not the first territory which has received special treatment through a constitutional provision, but it is another example in line with the practice of the constitution and visiting arrangements which treat federal units differently from each other to account for their specific circumstances. For instance, Article 371 of the constitution contain special provisions for certain areas of various states, as well as the entirety of some states. The marginal notes to these articles composed of rubric of 371 provide an overview of a number of states where arrangements in the nature of asymmetrical federalism are made in the spirit of accommodating the difference and specific requirements of regions across the nation. The next line, para 41, I'm not taking your lordships to the PDS, my lord, because this is enough of what I want to refer to. The de design of our constitution is such that it accommodates the interests of different regions while providing a larger constitutional umbrella to different states and union territories. It preserves the local aspirations of different regions. Unity and diversity is not only used in co common parlance, but is also embedded in our constitutional structure. Our interpretation, interpretation of the constitution must give substantive weight to the underlying principles. This is the Lord how we approach the constitution as has been done otherwise also. Now, my Lord, I add to this, my Lord, the huge number of precedents, my Lord, of what is called transformative constitutionalism. 1.36. The ultimate goal, that's from Navtej Singh Johar, of our magnificent constitution is to make right the upheaval which existed in Indian society before the adopting of the constitution. 
The court in so and so observed that the Indian Constitution is a great social document, almost revolutionary in its aim of transforming a medieval hierarchical society into a modern egalitarian democracy. And its provisions can only be comprehended only by a spacious social science approach, not a pedantic uh, traditional legalism. The whole idea of having a constitution is to guide the nation towards a resplendent future. Therefore, the purpose of having a constitution is to transform the society for the better. And this objective is for the fundamental pillar of transformative constitutionalism. Then, my lord, the Chief Justice, as he then was, my lord, in the 219 decision, my lord, of the Delhi decision, the constitution is a transformative document. The realization of this transformative potential rests ultimately in the ability to breathe life and meaning into its abstract concepts. For above all, the constitution was not intended by its draft persons, was intended, sorry, by its draft persons to be a significant instrument of bringing about social change in a caste-based feudal society witnessed by centuries of oppression and discrimination against the marginalized. As our constitutional jurisprudence has evolved, the realization of the transformative potential of the constitution has been founded on the evolution of equality away from its formal underpinnings to its substantial potential. Well, Lord, I cite this for a reason, Lord. When this hearing began, my Lord, it appeared to me that we were reading the Constitution as if it was a statute. For a long time, my Lord, we were going to this word and that word and this proviso and that proviso, my Lord. That is not how Constitutions were meant to be read or to be transformed. Then, my Lord, if your Lordship will come to this question 1.41, I won't read it, my Lord, because constitutional morality is also mentioned, my Lord, in various judgments of my Lord, the Chief Justice, when you refer to Pratap Bhanu Mehta's contribution, et cetera, my Lord. Now, my Lord, straight of NCT versus Union of India, if the moral values of our constitution were not held, upheld at every stage, the text of the constitution may not be enough to protect its democratic values. In order to truly understand what constitutional morality reflects, it is to answer necessary to answer what is that constitution trying to say and to identify the broadest possible range to fix the meaning of the text. Constitutional morality does not mean allegiance to the substantive provisions and principles of the constitution. It signifies a constitutional culture which each individual in a democracy must imbibe. Pratap Banu Mehta identifies certain features, features of constitutional morality chief amongst them being liberal values which govern the making of India's constitution and created expectations from the polity. One of the essential features of constitutional morality, thus is the ability and commitment to arrive at decisions on important issues consen consensually. It requires, despite all differences, we are part of a deliberative exercise. It is going to be my submission, my Lord, that this deliberative exercise, my Lord, has not taken place with the changes of the JNK constitution. Now, Mr. Sibyl Milod had a number of questions that were asked in parliament till the last day. Your Lordship has seen that. Are you changing 3570? The answer was no, no, no. And suddenly, Milod, out of the blue, we entered into 4th August, 5th August. This, Milod, consultation of concurrence, Milod, is fundamental to the manner in which we read constitutions and how each provision comes into place. Then, my Lord, I will just read, my Lord, the NCT decision. That's the earlier one, my Lord. While interpreting the provisions of the Constitution, the safe and most sound approach for the Constitutional Court to adopt is to read the words of the Constitution in the light of the spirit of the Constitution, so that the quintessential democratic nature of our Constitution and the paradigm of representative participation by way of citizenry engagement are not annihilated. This court must adopt an interpretation which glorifies the dem democratic spirit of the Constitution. The Constitution has mandated a federal balance wherein the independence of certain 
required degree is a short to the state government. As opposed to centralism, a balanced federal structure mandates that the union does not use up all the powers and, and, the, and the states enjoy freedom without any unsolicited interference from the central government with respect to matters while exclusively falling into the domain. So this is the approach, Milad, towards constitution to multi-symmetric federalism. Now, Milad, I will take your lordships straight away, Milad, to 370. I think at some stage a question fell from your lordships. Weren't any protests made before that, my lord? I just want to take your lordships to 2.15 at page 221 external. My lord, there is a literature that could fill a library on the protests over 370. And then, my lord, the state autonomy committee, my lord, read this out. And of course, it goes to a slightly further extreme, my lord. But this is, my lord, the constitutional understanding, which is not too dissimilar with other federations. I won't read it, my lord. I've just pointed it out to your lordships. Once again, my lord, I've reproduced here the debates. I'm not going to read those out, my lord. I am the speech has been read out to your lordships, my lord, two or three times. It's just that on page 224, whatever I've highlighted in bold, again, the government of India have committed themselves to the people of Kashmir in certain respects. They've committed themselves to the position that an opportunity would be given to the people of the state to decide for themselves whether they will remain with the Republic or to wish to go out of it. We are also committed to ascertaining the will of the people by means of plebiscite, provided that peaceful and normal conditions are restored. And the impartiality of the plebiscite plebiscite could be guaranteed. We have also agreed that the will of the people through the instrument of the constituent assembly will determine the constitution of the state as well as the sphere of union jurisdiction over the state. This is the commitment, my lord, that lies behind Article 317. Then, my lord, at the bottom of the page, till a constituent assembly comes into being, only an interim arrangement is possible, not an arrangement which could at once be brought in line with the arrangements that exist with other states. Now, if you remember the viewpoints I've mentioned, it's an inevitable conclusion that at the present, at the present we could establish an interim system is an attempt to establish such a system. Then, my lord, I will uh, skip, my lord, other passages that have been read out in all your lordships. The JK Constituent Assembly, my lord, 11.21. I'm coming to, coming to paid external page 217. Sorry, 217. 227. Why is it?
Sheikh Abdullah's you know, speech has been read. But this is their understanding in the absence of a merger agreement. As I indicated earlier, the 370 is in the nature of establishing the relationships. And in that portion that I've highlighted, this arrangement involved a division of sovereignty, which is the normal feature of federation beyond the powers transferred it to, to it by, by it to the dominion. The state enjoyed complete residuary uh, sovereignty, which is what is reflected in the JK Constitution. So, my lord, the instrument of accession says list one, list three, they have their place, but we have all the residuary powers. Therefore, control over the state lists, my lord, as far as they are concerned. Then, my lord, When the draft constitution, my lord, was uh, introduced, I'm coming to my lord 11.25 at 231 and 232. Just at 232, my lord, just above 11.26. By this, I mean that all these special constitutional privileges which our state enjoyed prior to 1953 are enjoyed by her even today. In other words, the state amount enjoys the same kind of autonomy which it stood prior to 1953. Therefore, to say the instrument of accession wiped things out, my lord, is simply not correct. Now, my lord, 11.28, I've already read it out to your lordships, my lord, because it imposes a limit one question that was put, can 370 be amended or not amended? Is it there permanently? Mr. Sebal said that's not before your lordships, but at any rate, it may not have been a sufficient answer. There is a proviso, my lord, that was added by CO48. CO48 is a foundational document, my lord. And that is at 11.28, provided further that no such amendment shall have the effect in relation to the state of Jammu and Kashmir unless applied by the order of the president under clause one of 370. In other words, after you go through the amendment process.
No me lo Can this proviso? Somebody's cell phone triggered. What has happened is, my lord, when the microphone was uh, on, some things emerged there, which I didn't want to emerge because I was talking to my colleagues. <laughs> I hope they will be excised. But that's what I went to him and tell, told him that your whispers are also being recorded. <laughs> my lord, we will deal with all that, my lord. <laughs> with a pinch of salt, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> but it's quite accurate. Huh? <laughs> I shudder to think, my lord, if this was the case when we were arguing Babri Masjid, what would come in the transcript? <laughs> so it's a huge amount of exchange took place, my lord. Now, my lords, therefore, my lord, how do you amend the 370? You amend it through the 368 process. But there was in CO 48, my lord, a provision that you will then go to 370 and follow the procedure in 371. And that's very important, my lord. Your lordship asked what was lost on the 4th of August. This is something that was lost. And they didn't even use the amendment power. Which is the only power available to them, my lord, to delete 370, not the circuitous process that they used in 272 and 273. Yes, Dr. Now, my lords, on 235.11.32 onwards. My lord, your lordship conferred. That took time as well. <laughs> Happy though I am that your lordships did, my lord. My lord, I'm going to be super quick, my lord. Yes. Just give me that indulgence. Now, my lord, here are all the cases. Your lordship needs to go through Premnath call, which I've summarized, my lord, in 11.33. Because it actually explains what the situation was after 1950. When there was an instrument of accession, but no merger agreement. On page 236, my lord, my submission, my lord, uh, from Premnath call is Application of 370 of the Constitution to the state of JK also does not impact the plenary powers of the Maharaja. The form of the Constitution to, to be applied to JK was a matter left to be determined by the State Constituent Assembly, un, and until such a decision was taken, the constitutional relationship between the Union and the states was governed by the terms of the IUA. So the internal Malod relationship had to still be determined under 370. Now, my Lord, an, arg but an argument has been made on the basis of Puran, Lakampal, etc. What is the meaning of modification? And they say it's very wide. But, my Lord, your Lordship has to read it in context. And that is when the matter was not referred to the uh, seven judge bench, my lord, your lordships took the view that please read these decisions in context. Don't read them outside the context. Now, my lord, I'll come to 370, my lord. What I've done in the meanwhile, my lord, is done a short page, page and a half, my lord, as but I'm not giving it now because your Lordship may introduce the guillotine earlier. Now, my Lord, kindly come to 370. Does that begin at 239, Dr. Dhawan? Sorry, my Lord. Is that... Oh, oh sorry. I thought you were submission. referring to your submissions. My Lord, I'm not going to repeat what's in the submission. Always. I'm going to just, my Lord, stress what is not in the submission, I stressed orally. 
पैदा यस डॉक्टर नॉम लॉट बी नीड नॉट बी ट्रबल्ड That has been the great Malod call. This is a temporary provision. It's temporary to the extent that 370 indicates. Therefore, Malod, in my personal view, Malod, 370 sub clause two and three, which deal with the constituent assembly, Malod, have become more obvious. They have invoked this, Malod. In CO two seven three, all of a sudden a provision, my lord, which is constitutionally beyond the extension of the assembly, has suddenly been used in uh, CO two seven three. That and I think it's uh, uh, it's CO forty four, is it? Forty four is the only time, my lord. Three seventy sub clause three was used in nineteen fifty two, and now, my lord, in the year two thousand nineteen. So, my lord, what remains, my lord, after the Constituent Assembly? In our submission, what remains is three seventy sub clause one. Not to be read as a statute. But to read it to be read in context, and what are the provisions here, my lord? I am not going to read them out. It's been read ad nauseum, my lord. It says, follow the instrument of succession, accession, my lord, as far as consultation is concerned. For the rest, there must be concurrence. And the same is true, my lord, of D. Three seventy one D. Those provisions, my lord, are governed by the two provisos. Which then talk of consultation and concurrence again. The reason why I said, my lord, that three seventy could not be tinkered with during president's rule. Is because there is a mandatory requirement, as it was in Article Three, about consultation and concurrence. You can't say we wiped out the Constitution, we wiped out all the treaties, so that three seventy is gone. Amend it. Go through that particular process. But by the circuitous route, my lord, mandatory provisions which survive in three seventy sub clause one are violated, and they can't be done in president's rule for a very simple reason, because it says the state government, my lord, consultation with the government of the state is declared by the president to correspond in such matters, other matters in such lists with the concurrence of the government of the state. Of course, provision one in this article shall apply in relation to the state, and then, my lord, once again, in D. Now, my lord, can we wish this away by some circuitous route? Three seventy, by far from being a relic, my lord, is in fact what is there in the merger of agreement read with the instrument of accession. In fact, my lord, I say this: this is part and parcel. My lord, of the multiple federalism that exists, you can't use these provisions, my lord, without subjecting them to the discipline of Article Three Seventy, and that's what Damnu, my lord, Damnu, your lord, should get the also says you can't do it. So, my lord, I asked, come back to my broader proposition, that while President's rule was in operation. You could not use Article Three because you can't substitute leg one legislature for another, and you can't, my lord, do away with Three Seventy for a very simple reason that mandatory provisions of the Constitution do not say that Parliament can do this and the President can do this. It says it must be done by the government of JK, which is not, my lord, 
the Erzat's government of JK, but in 272, it says, with the Council of Ministers. And that is fundamental to the operation of any government. So you don't do it with the Council of Ministers. Can you do it simply, without the way it was introduced in Parliament by Mr. Amit Shah, that you simply do it by saying, we're using 370 and this is how it's done. In President's rule, my Lord, it cannot be done. There is no tearing hurry, my Lord, in our constitution to say that the amendment power can be used and abused whenever you want it to. I'll show me a deal. Lord, I want to show quickly two decisions, my Lord, on why the merger is separated from. It is in volume six, my Lord, of the cases. <laughs> and the case is promote Chandra Dev. It's at page 1587. PDF. And I want PDF 144. And the steps that were required. And I'm saying that this, in fact, is in a, in a sense, my Lord, the merger agreement is really what 370 is. Now, my Lord, I take volume? your Lordship to page 51596. Dr. Dhan, which volume? Sorry, my Lord, volume six. This is volume six, item number 10, page 1587, PDF. It starts at 135. And I'm taking your lordship to 1596 at 144. My lord, the, this is in para 10. On page 1596, my lord, the bottom of the page, my lord. This was, my lord, some. What PDF page will that be, actually? 144. 144. It says of the instrument of accession, Lord, in the last four, five lines of page 1596, does your Lordship have it? This accession, that is instrument of accession, did not affect the continuance of sovereignty of the rulers entering into the agreement, save as provided by or under the instrument of accession. So there was no, External sovereignty was lost, my lord, but internal sovereignty, my lord, remained where it was. And then, my lord, going over the page at 1597, my lord, four lines from the top, the second step was the signing of what has been termed the standstill agreement, the form of which appears in the white paper. And a few the acceding state signs the standstill agreement which provided for the continuance in time of all subsisting agreements and administrative arrangements in the matters of common concern between the states and the Dominion of India. The first phase of the process of integration of the Indian states into the Indian Dominion was the accession of the states as a force. The second phase followed on the merger of the states into the Dominion of India as a result of the merger agreement. Now, there was no merger agreement, my lord. So, where was the merger agreement, my lord? Either we continue the sovereignty, it was said, my lord, in Premnath Paul, or we say that this is the essential step by which, my lord, internal sovereignty and internal arrangements are worked out. Then it says, my lord, a little further down,
but four lines below that below. As a result of the merger agreement signed by the rulers of these states on or after 14th December, but before the 1st of January 48, the dominion of India was vested with sovereign powers and the ex-rulers were left only with their private property and their annual privy purses. This was the effect of the merger agreement. And it's all there in the white paper of the states, but I don't want to go into. So where was this loss, not this arrangement of internal sovereignty worked out? In Article 317 below. The only two other states were Hyderabad and Junagadh below, they stand on a footing of their own. And that is why, my lord, I emphasize that 370 is the rep repository of the merger agreement read with the instrument of accession. In this very volume, my lord, I want to refer to one other, which is the first privy person's case, my lord. It starts at PDF. It starts at PDF. 390. And I want to take your lordship straight away. Of course, the amendment came later in taking the Privy Purses Amendment uh, power away. Page three. So, my lord, I'll take, we're still on volume six, my lord, and I'm taking your lordship to PDF 457. Just one small paragraph. Paragraph 111 on page 1909. PDF 457. Is to Mr. Evan? May I read out a lot? Para 1 and 111? Yes. The plea raised by the union must be considered in the light of these developments. The political developments and the history of negotiations and agreements were certainly not intended to be an exercise in futility. The argument that the parties to the instruments were entering into a solemn undertaking intended the arrangements to be temporary and likely to be set at not by the unilateral act of the Union of India Beautiful. must be rejected. This is building on Mr. Sibyl's argument, my lord. A unilateral act, my lord. The assumption you don't take into account history. So the argument raised by the union that this is an exercise in futility going back. The response is the argument that the parties to the instruments were entering into solemn undertakings in intending the arrangements to be temporary and liable to be set at not by the unilateral act of the Union of India must be rejected. I have a submission, my lord, which I will hand over and go through it. One of my arguments, my lord, whether it is done by transformational morality, my lord, because of the antecedents or whether it's done by basic structure or which transformation morality in my view is a part. That 370 to that extent is part of the basic structure. As a substitute for the merger agreement, as, a, as an interpretation, my lord. Three fifty six, my lord. Where, where is it anyway? And my lord, I'm coming back to volume one of the submissions. The PDF number is two six seven. Well, I put in a table 
to show how president's rule has been exercised and section 92 has been exercised. Well, Lord, it is my respectful submission. They cannot be exercised in tandem. As it was, my Lord, governor's rule had taken place. And now president's rule was imposed. On that, my Lord, if your Lordship will see, I've given my Lord all the uh, cases that I want to cite. I won't bother your Lordship with them. Except, my Lord, page 276, which is PDF 276, 4.25. I'm sorry, Mr. Dhawan. What are you referring to? Not my submission. Your submission. I'm now winding up, Mr. Page number? Mercifully. <laughs> 276. 276. An important aspect, my lord. Bomai, of course, is there. You can't remember that in Bomai, my lord, it was just the action of presidents. 32 was not involved in the same extent. But I'm relying on 14, 4.25. Rameshwar Prashad's case. Has your Lordship got it, Lord? Yes. It is open to the court an exercise of judicial review to examine the question whether the governor's report is based on relevant material or not, whether it is made bona fide or not, and whether the facts have been duly verified or not. This, my lord, is what your lordships have indicated on the extent of judicial review. Now, what has happened in this case, my lord, and your lordships, my lord, as a Nagaraj can lay down conditionalities for the exercise of 356, all the documents must be made publicly available and placed before parliament. In this case, even the governor's report, my lord, was not placed before parliament or before the court. So when your lordship, my lord, says 356 is justiciable, what are the contours of this justiciability? A full, frank, and complete disclosure to parliament and to the people. Just to say that this is, I've received this message, there it is, and not even to place the report. That is why I say, my lord, the entire exercise of president's rule needs to be examined by our lordship in this case. Others will argue, my lord, more on this when their turn comes. Now, my lord, I'm going to give your lordships my summary, my lord. Give it to the other side. Because this, my lord, is the substance of what I've added to my written submission. May I read it out, Mala? Yes. <laughs> India has a multi-symmetrical constitution to be interpreted as transformational in nature. It's unique. And that is why your Lordship insists on these transformations, despite the many amendments, despite the length. This is a multi-symmetrical constitution. My second submission, the instrument of exception represents subject to conditions, the loss of external sovereignty. However, standstill and merger agreements finalizes the internal sovereignty arrangement. <coughs> and that, my lord, is to be the internal sovereignty arrangement is to be found in 370. 370 is the result of a binding historical agreement. The instrument of accession deals inter alia with conditions of external sovereignty, but in the absence of standstill and merger agreements, 370 represents a substituted, constitutionally consecrated major agreement for finalizing internal and external sovereignty, resulting in two interactive, so generous constitutions, unlike any other states. 
It is unique and part of the basic structure entrenched in democracy and federalism. For basic structure and a lot of re-transformational constitutionalism. 371 alone survives, and 372 and 3 have exhausted their invocation. Why is this important, my lord? Because, my lord, after 1954, the first time 373 was used was in 273. The provision is gone, the Constituent Assembly is gone, and the substitution is for the Constituent Assembly re legislature in the state. How can you resurrect, my lord, 370 subclause 3 all of a sudden, years later, after the assembly is over and there is a JK constitution? I'm not as far as the width of power under 1D is there, my lord, it's subject to constraints. I needn't say more than what has been said before. It's subject to its two provisos. And for the rest of the Constitution, consultation and concurrent. Now, my lord, Article 3, 4, and 370 contain mandatory requirements on information to be laid before the House and inter alia requiring concurrence and consultation. Unfortunately, the mandatory requirements of Article 3 for sending the bill to the legislature was suspended by the presidential proclamation of 19th December 2018 which is ultra virus and taints both the declaration and the extension of president's rule in 2018 and 2019. Then, my lord, on president's rule, the president's rule provisions of 356 and 392 and section 92 of the JK constitution can not be imposed in tandem. 3 and 4 and 370 cannot be invoked during President's rule at all, since they require the existence of a legislature and state government for which the President and Parliament cannot be constitutionally complements. Then President rule as required by S.R. Bomai and Rameshwar Prashad is justiciable, requiring objective basis, which includes the governor's report and all materials should be placed before the people and parliament justifying itself. It, no, no, it, I was just telling my uh, colleague that you have really summarized very precisely all that you have argued. We've taken down what you have argued, but now this formulates. We read it out, Marat. Certainly, certainly. And then I'll sit down. And that's a promise. <laughs> now, my lord, Article 370. So I've said all the materials, my lord. Article 370 can be amended, subject to the caveat in CO 48 that all amendments relating to JK must follow the procedure in Article 370 subclause 1. It is not enough in 273 say all treaties are out and the constitution is gone. How can a constitution disappear like this, my lord? Many federations, my lord, have two uh, state constitutions and JK, are, because of its nature, my lord, did. Accordingly, 272 and 273 are invalid as being excessive, and the JK Reorganization Act 2019, under 3 and 4, as going beyond the mandatory provisions and in violation of the process of Article 3, wrongly suspended by the presidential no notification of 19th December. Now, my lord, I ask. My Lord, you're answering your Lordship's question. What was lost in what? yes for the August? <laughs> That's point nine. Mr. Zafar Shah, my Lord, will give your Lordships a detailed account. This. this is my summary account. What was lost? The loss of statehood by degrading it to union territories. That was lost. Indirect abolishment of the JK Constitution. Loss of residuary power. Loss of territory contrary to the JK Constitution, Section 3. Section 4, sorry. Abolition of mandatory, informatory, concurrent, and consultation provisions. Conversion of statehood into union territories without adequate safeguards, especially for JK and Ladakh. 
constitution without a proper amendment and consultative process and concurrent procedure of Article 370, for which CO48 was added to 368. The right of permanent residents of JK on their right to property and to vote. Because 31, my Lord, Article 31 was not suspended, only the later Article 31 remained. In the light of the above, it is pleaded, restore statehood to JK, permit the continuance of the JK Constitution, have immediate elections under the JK Constitution, abrogate President's rule. So this is what I have to say. I'm sorry I've stepped over my time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Dhawan. Thank you very much, Dr.